Hello guys and welcome back to Jam Chemistry class. This is chemistry. And today we are going to be looking at intermolecular forces of attraction. Right? So uh, in the introduction to this topic in previous episodes, we have talked about uh, intermolecular forces of attraction and intramolecular forces of attraction. And we said we have bonds like this, right? We have what intramolecular forces of attraction. This is arrow A, intramolecular, and what intermolecular forces of what of attraction. So under intramolecular, we talk about the ionic or electrovalent bond. Electrovalent bond. Then uh, we talked about the covalent. Bonds talk about coordinate covalent or we call them dative bonds, right? Then talk about metallic bonds, all right? But for the intermolecular bonds, we said hydrogen bonds, hydrogen bond, and what van der Waals forces, Waals forces, all right? So these are the uh, two very most common what intermolecular forces of attraction. They are weak forces of attraction. They are generally weaker than what the intermolecular forces of attraction, right? So intermolecular forces of attraction are those forces of attraction that exist between a molecule, between a molecule, molecule, and crystal lattice. There are no force of attraction that exists between a molecule and a crystal what lattice, right? So you see, they are generally weaker than the intramolecular forces of attraction. They are way, way weaker than intramolecular forces of attraction, and they occur. They occur mainly in covalent molecules. They occur mainly in covalent molecules. And the two most common, the two most commonest. Intermolecular forces are hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces, and these are what we are going to what we are going to what focus on today. So let's look at hydrogen bond first. Let's see how hydrogen bond is what is formed, and then before we talk about what van der Waals forces, right? Now, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond is formed is formed between a hydrogen what atom a hydrogen atom of one molecule is formed between what a hydrogen atom of one molecule and a highly electronegative negative atom of another what molecule so hydrogen molecule uh, hydrogen bond is usually formed between a hydrogen atom of one molecule and a highly electronegative what uh atom of another what of another molecule all right so uh highly electronegative what elements include uh, elements like fluorine fluorine is the most electronegative element fluorine we have fluorine oxygen oxygen nitrogen these are what these are electronegative what elements and um, most commonly the compounds that we found what hydrogen bonds include uh hydrogen chloride chloride hydrogen fluoride fluoride right also find it in ethanol we also find it in ethanoic acid uh, these are what compounds that what we find what hydrogen bonds what in all right so also another very important thing that we need to know is that what the hydrogen bonds are what are uh, uh, are also found in what in impure covalent compounds impure covalent compounds and this makes them to what to have some special characteristics right it shows some special characteristics when we hydrogen bond what occurs in impure covalent compounds it makes this covalent compounds to what show what some characteristics but before then another thing you need to know is that the higher the electronegativity of the what of this highly electronegative what uh, element 
right? The higher the electronegativity of this highly electronegative word element, right? The higher world or the stronger the world, the hydrogen world bond. The higher the electronegativity of this highly electronegative word element, the stronger the hydrogen bond. Or the greater the world, the electronegativity word uh, difference between what both what atoms that are participating in this hydrogen bond, the stronger or the higher the electronegativity difference, right? Between those two atoms, right, the stronger the hydrogen bond is bond is formed. So what 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 um what concerns or what makes hydrogen bond to be stronger is the electronegativity difference between what both atoms that constitute what the bond. The stronger the or the higher the electronegative the electronegative difference between both atoms, the stronger the what the hydrogen bond that is formed. And I've said that word that. Hydrogen bonds are present in what in impure covalent compounds, and this medium to show some properties such as what elevated, elevated boiling point, right? Elevated melting point also, right? Then um, increased solubility, solubility in water. And so on and so forth. So these are the, some of the properties that were that that impure covalent compounds show when hydrogen bonds are present in them. We now want to work double so much into hydrogen bond so that it does not go within the, the limit of this class. So I'm going to quickly move to the other type of intermolecular what bond or force of attraction called what Van der Waals forces. This Van der Waals forces is found in what in non-polar molecules and in crystal lattice. Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces. It is found in what? In non-polar molecules. Non-polar molecules and in crystal lattice. Examples of this is what is iodine and graphite. All right, so van der Waals forces are found what in non-polar molecules and in crystal lattice. Example is what is iodine and graphite. One thing you know about van der Waals forces is that they are the weakest form, the weakest form of all intermolecular forces of attraction. They are the weakest form of all intermolecular forces of of attraction. But if a lot of van der Waals forces occur between what objects, right? If, if a lot of them or call what between or interact within what uh, within what object the force can be very very strong the bond can be very strong rather so when a lot of van der Waals forces what interact between what atoms the van der Waals force can be very very what strong so examples of van der Waals forces is uh, uh, dipole right which is called what the induced dipole interactions Right, so what dipoles, right? Dipoles, like for example, in an atom, right? Electrons move, electrons was moved from one end of the atom to the other end, right? So, thereby was inducing what dipoles, right? Stroginda uh, 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 actually said that what there's no electron with zero energy, no electron with zero energy. Electrons have what energy, so because they are moving from one end to the other. The world will be inducing what from one uh, pole to the other they'll be inducing what dipole right so this is what i's um scrolling talked about all right so but you do not want to double too much into it this is just an example of van der waals force dipole i also have another one called induced dipole which is called dipole induced dipole interaction this was given. This is uh, another name for this is uh, London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces. It was named after a a a, a chemist called what uh, our physicist called Frist London. Right. So I talked about what intramolecular forces. And I've talked about what intermolecular what forces. Please do not forget that this video tutorial is brought to you by OT School Jam app. Do not forget what to go to Play Store, download it, practice on the app, participate in the UTME challenge for uh for students to win prizes and also learn what your weaknesses and learn how to improve on them. 
use that app and i guarantee you success in your exam do not forget to like this video also give it give video a like give it a like just click on the like button below the video right or uh click on the subscribe button below the video also right so that i can get notification once we release another new video do not forget to share also so i talked about uh, intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces and we said intermolecular forces that are, the, that are weaker than intramolecular i'll talk about hydrogen bond i'll talk about van der Waals forces but as we say van der Waals forces are the weakest form of what intermolecular forces of attraction right so this is what we have for you today and of course in the next class we are going to invariably go to another new topic join us in the next episode see you in the next class my name remains Ola Bitangod.